Okay, our, um, our survey is now finished importing after the pre-processing stage. And as you can see now, all the buttons are available and its status is ready. You can see it contains 7,500 images spread across 11 sites and zero videos and associated frames. You'll also see that there are no annotation sets associated with it. So the next stage, or well, next thing we want to look at is the editing of that survey. So that's handled with the edit survey button here. So we click on that, brings up this window. Um, and so these are the various different options available to us. Um, so each in their own tab. So first and foremost, we can now um, add coordinates for our sites. Um, there's two ways to do that. One is to use a KML file, which is just the Google Earth format. So if you just create place marks in Google Earth, where the names of those place marks match the sites as trap tag has imported them, because otherwise how else we know which one is which, um, we can then import that automatically for you. Otherwise, you can just get a very simple approach and do it manually. So you can set each site, latitude, longitude, and altitude in decimal coordinates. Um, coordinates aren't necessary. So if you don't want to enter them, you can leave them out of the system. But obviously, if you want um, to be able to have them in your CSVs um, or your various, or be able to use the various mapping functionalities that are available in TrapTagger, um, you really need them. They also are, they do help with the individual ID side of things um, because they do form part of a heuristic algorithm used to determine uh, the likelihood that two individuals are the same uh, based on how far apart they are as a function of time. Um, so that's, that's also something to keep in mind. The next tab is where you can edit your camera timestamps. Um, so the idea here is you can edit. Um, so this shows each of our cameras at each of our sites. Um, and the timestamp associated with the very first image from that camera. And so the idea here is you can shift an entire camera's entire set of images from a camera if you realize that the camera's clock was set incorrectly. Um, so it's just a solid all set. We don't try and handle all the weird nonlinear stuff that cameras can sometimes do. Um, but this is just purely if somebody in the field swapped AM and PM or just forgot to set the camera or something like that. You can now just enter in the actual timestamp of that first image in the same format um, and everything will be shifted accordingly. So this is something you should do before you proceed. So a lot of these are cases where you can come back and edit stuff like coordinates, it wouldn't really matter or something like that. Um, but if you are wanting to edit timestamps, you can do this later, but it's better to do it now so that everything is clustered correctly from the start um, as that will give you better performance. The next option is to edit image timestamps. So this, as I said in the pre-processing um, stages, this is not really applicable to, to most people um, as most images have nice, easily extractable timestamps in them. Um, but if you have images where your exit data has been wiped for whatever reason, um, or if you have videos where there is no machine readable timestamps and you need to visually extract those timestamps, you will have use for this tab here. So basically your options are to view any remaining images without timestamps. Um, since we um, finished that pre-processing step completely and we didn't have to skip any cameras or skip any images, there are no images with missing, missing timestamps, images or videos. Um, so that's one option. The next option is to look at um, all the timestamps that have been extracted automatically for you. Um, and this just lets you um, go through and check that they've been imported correctly um, uh, or extracted correctly. Um, so you can just go through and edit them as necessary um, and just page along them um, like as you would like to do. In this case, um, you know, so it's on a per camera basis. So these are all, you can look through all the images associated with this camera. You can page the next camera. In this case, I only wiped the exit data from a particular camera's images. Um, so that's why there are no other cameras available to us. And then lastly, you can then also view your manually edited timestamps. Um, again, just to make sure they're correct, um, if you really want to do that. Um, again, on a per camera basis, and it's only on a single camera here. Next, we can look at the species classifier associated with the data set and change it. So the one at the top that's selected is the one that's currently applied to the data set. Um, you can select another one and then just understand that when you do that, 
that'll kick off a processing step, which can take a while, depending on how much data you've got. Um, but that's typically for case, you know, you very rarely want to do that, but it can be if you're wanting to perhaps compare different classifiers on the same data set and you create then an annotation set um, per classifier, or if you want to completely pro process an, a, a day, uh, an annotation set and then switch to a different classifier and then do an AI check to find some potential mistakes and just to refine your data set, you can do that. So you'll just simply select the other option. Um, then there are some advanced options, which are called, uh, called advanced options for a reason, um, because they you need to make sure you understand what they're doing. And you know they're only for niche use cases and stuff like that. So they're both actually for the same niche use case. Um, and that's for basically surveys where large flocks of birds have overly triggered um, the camera traps uh, and then it's just becoming a problem affecting the accuracy on the mammal survey. Um, so the first option here called small, ignore small detections does what it says and it just ignores all detections um, that are smaller than a certain size on the image. Um, so the idea is to get rid of birds but obviously that can filter out um, small animals and animals that are very far away. Um, so there is a trade-off in accuracy that one gets by using that. But for those of you that have had that issue, will be aware of the usefulness of that function. And similarly for small, uh, mask sky detections, we basically ignore all detections where the bottom of the detection occurs in the top third of the image. Um, so basically, again, just mask birds flying around. And again, there is a trade-off in accuracy that you might miss. Um, some stuff depending on how your cameras are set up. So um, again, you can select those and then say if you want those. Um, next, we've got our masks. Um, so those are, um, we have no masks yet because you create them during annotation. So there are none yet. So you can come back later on and edit those and delete them and stuff like that. Um, and that's, we'll cover that um, during the annotation process. Next, we can look at our static detections, which we approved and rejected in the um, pre-processing stage. Um, and so here we can see who looked at it, um, who made that decision, filtered by camera, and then whether it's static or not. So here we can see, we can just page through them and we find our log, you can see it's static. So you can change that, change your selection on, on some of these selections and obviously still page through the images associated um, with that static detection. Uh, and then lastly, you can just see your, um, your survey structure. And so the idea here is that basically just lets you see under the hood and just check what, what's going on. So in this case, you can see, um, for each, um, uh, folder path that you, that you had, um, you know, okay, this folder path is site K11, camera C21. And it's got 47 images, zero videos, and zero frames. And you can then just check um, and see what's going on um, if, if that is of any use to you. So once you all the, made all those changes, you can obviously just save and submit and continue. Um, and then just quickly as a brief, brief something else to cover as well, we've also got, obviously got the option to add files as well. So that's if you want to continue, with the, you know, add each time you go and collect your SD cards in the field, you want to add it to a a continually running survey, you can then just say add files, and it's exactly the same as the import um, um, form, except obviously you don't choose the name and stuff like that. So you simply just select your file, your files, um, select your uh, site identifier, um, and, and and stuff like that, and it'll do the necessary. It'll, it'll kick off the import process.